Hello there and welcome to another John Day QA in demonstration video and in this one what I'm going to do is do a bit of showing off here I'm going to do a bit of uh, eye candy controls so I'm going to use some graphical controls uh, to replace the boring sort of data that you see in a SharePoint list so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to the resource files uh, and show you how that works and I'm going to use those graphics uh, instead of regular text data for one or two of the controls and data fields so here I am inside my instructor SharePoint site and the first thing I'll do is going to show you that I've got a task list here it comes up with the the regular task item property form so I'm going to replace this form with an InvoPath equivalent so I'm going to click cancel go to my list tab and if you've got the enterprise copy of SharePoint or if you've got the Office 365 with an E3 or an E4 plan, you should be able to see that customized form button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this form, beef it up a bit more. So one of the things I like doing is it's quite simple and easy. If I if I need to give a rough idea of how I want my forms to look, I would use PowerPoint to start working with a graphic. So what I do is I just use a blank slide, a nice simple shape. There we go. I'm going to shorten that a bit. What I'm going to do is make that a slightly different fill. But I'm also going to get rid of the border. So there we go. And on top of that, I'm going to insert a picture. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right mouse click in this rectangle and add text task details. And just make it slightly bigger. So I've got the basic header that I would like to have at the top of my form. What I'm going to do is I'm going to group all those together. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save that as a picture. So I'm going to create this and call it the Contoso banner. So now when I go into InfoPath, add a nice page design at the top. My current table where all my task information is. And I'll move that, cut and paste it into my new page layout. And what I'm going to do out at the top there is insert the picture. Now you can see I've got a bit of a padding or a margin in there. So I'm going to right mouse click inside that header area, go to the table properties, and inside my cell you can see I've got some padding. I'm just going to set all these to zero. So when I enter my picture, it's using up the boundaries of that cell. So I'm just going to insert the picture now. There's my Contosa banner and plops it in and it looks quite nice. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that percentage complete because it's just a number and the, what I want to do with this is make it quicker for people to fill in but also give them the ability to type the number in themselves there. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to shrink that box down I'm going to divide the cell it's inside and split it into two separate cells. Okay, I'm going to place that percentage complete in the right hand cell. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the left hand side for graphical bars that the users can click on that will just change the number automatically to increments of tens. And you can use any numbers. You could use four buttons that do it in 25, 50, 75, 100. I'm going to use 10 buttons. It's a bit time consuming but well worth it. So I'm going to first of all go back to PowerPoint and create some very simple but very effective looking buttons. So I'm going to create three. I'm going to use the rounded rectangle again. Now I don't want these to be too big so I'm going to zoom into the slide. I'm going to set these to about maybe 40 pixels and set the width to about 20 pixels. Okay. As I said I'm going to make three of these. So I'm going to have one that's got an empty look and feel and then when I hover over it I'd like it to sort of look filled in and then when I click it I'd like it to be sort of kind of three dimensional so I'm going to use I'm just using these quick shapes and to cheat I'm actually going to use three of these so my percentage complete was made up of uh, low figures in red and then the medium figures would be in a sort of an amber and the high figures will be in green. And there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save these 
and again as pictures. So I'm going to give these particular names like L off, which shows that it's a particular low value that is switched off. This one will be a low hover or low hov, and then a low on. I'm going to repeat that for all nine of those images. So I've now got images all saved as files. What I'm going to do now is go to InfoPath and what you can do with InfoPath is you can add your graphics to resource files and these will package up inside the XSM file so that I can use these uh, with a particular picture control. So I'm going to add all nine of those from my pictures gallery. There they are. HOV. Now I can't unfortunately select all at once. I've got to do these one by one. The low ones, add them in, and there they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine images. I'm going to have ten buttons. Each button will act as an increment to my percentage complete. So I'm going to insert using the home tab going to go into my list of controls and again I'm using this SharePoint list so you get a limited number of controls but one of the ones I do get is that picture button so I'll give that a click and I'm going to go into the properties of this picture button and I'm now going to specify the picture to use I can browse for a file but since I've added them into the resource files here they're all listed in here so I'm going to say to start off with it's a L off and then if I hover over it, it will use the L hov. So I'm just going to press F5 and there you go, as I hover over it, it just changes the image. But when I click it, I need it to stay on. Now unfortunately there isn't anything in there that allows me to show that, so I'm going to place another button right next to that. And the idea is that this one will show it always switched on. I don't need any hovering for that one, so if I leave that alone, it will stay with the same image even if I hover over it. Okay, so I have my two buttons that I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to have two of these for each 10% increment I'm going to add to my complete data field. What I'm also going to do is take one of these on buttons here and place that at the beginning, and that will represent the 0%. So the first thing I'll do is going to add an action rule to set the value of these buttons to their appropriate percentage complete. So the first one, I'm going to create a new action rule. I'll name this set value. No condition. Its job is to set the field value of the completed field to zero. I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to copy that rule and I'm going to paste it to the other buttons. And this will just mean all I've got to do is modify the value I'm assigning to each of the actions. In this case, with these first two, these are going to represent 10%. So I'm going to change the action. Don't forget it's a percentage, so I don't put 10, I put in 0 0.1 there. And do the same thing this one. OK, I'm going to preview the form just to see how that looks. So at the moment, all they're doing is, is I click each button, it will set the value, as you can see, on the right-hand side to the appropriate number. Now, the idea is I don't want both buttons in each set to be on screen. The idea is I'll alternate between each button. So I need to hide the appropriate button. So, for example, I'm going to create a new rule on this off switch. And the idea is I don't want to show that button if I am above that value. So I'm going to create a new formatting rule. I'm going to say hide when bill above value. I nearly got confused there. So if it is 10% or more, I don't need to show the off switch. It's, it's, it's already on. It's actively at 10% or higher. So hide when above the value. The value will be if the condition is if the complete percent there are, greater than or equal to, and of course this number represents 0 0.1. Remember, I set that value to it. And I'm going to use that value 
um, for that set, 0.1. And it's going to be the opposite for the on button. So if, if it's on, then I want to have it on screen, but I want to hide that button if the percentage is lower than 10%. So I'm going to again copy that new rule and I'm going to paste it, there it is, to my on switch. I'll change the value so it says hide when below. If it's below the percentage of 10%, I don't want to see this button. So I just change the operator to the, so instead of greater than or equal to, use the opposite of that, which is less than. And just make sure that both these buttons hide. So I forgot to do that. There we go, hide this control. Let's preview that and see if that works. So I should now only see 0%, so I'm actually seeing the 0 on. If I give that button a click, now 10% it's on. If I drop it to 0%, it goes back off again. There we go. So I've just done the first 10%. What I need to do then is take these buttons, copy and paste them, and then all I've got to do now is for each set, change the values in both rules from 0.1 to 0.2. So I'm going to change this one first. Don't forget there are two rules. There's a formatting rule with the condition and then there's an action rule with an action value to set and they're both going to go to 0.2. So just repeat that for both sets, both buttons in the set and change the set value as well. I'm going to save you the pain right here because I've got to do four sets of those. So I'm going to copy and paste these. Okay, so I've now got more buttons. Preview that again. You can see this is actually now working up to 40%. Now with 50% and higher, I, I don't want red buttons. I'm going to actually use orange ones. But instead of building those buttons, those picture buttons again from scratch, again I'm going to copy and paste one set so they have the rules I can then customize quickly the only thing I've got to do then is just change the properties of the buttons so they're p displaying the correct pictures so for this one I need the medium off image and the medium hover image there you go. and then for this button I just use one to represent it being on and that's the medium on button there it is at the bottom there and as laborious as it is with InfoPath, you know, you get some fun stuff to do, but it can be quite tedious to build. So I'm going to go and quickly modify these by copy and pasting them. And I'm going to do from 0.5 I already have. I'm going to copy and paste, so I've got 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0.9. And the last thing I do is again take these ones and change the colouring once again to the green. So the green is going to be the 100% when the per job is fully complete. So I'm going to use the high off and high hover. And for the last one there I'm going to use the high on. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to whiz through all these remaining buttons and set their properties and their action values to 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and the last ones there will be using the value of 1 to represent 100%. So I'll do that now. Okay, so I've done that. That's, that's quite a tedious job, so you will find that um, you might miss a few things out or make mistakes, so it's a good idea to test it make sure it's all working. Quick publish it, and I just save the local copies as I always do with my templates. Um, publish it now and if I go back to my browser go into my task list and if I go and add a new task I've got a slightly more spruced up task page with a few extra features and there you go and again spend a bit more time really sort of beefing up the look of your form okay have fun with your forms.